In this video, I'm gonna present actually uh, just a few examples. You can't really exhaust all the examples with uh, combinations. Um, I did a video on kind of um, where the combination formula comes from. So it is to do just with counting, except when order is kind of irrelevant. So I'll put up a link up above there, okay, to that video if you wanted to uh, see the formula within combinations. And in here, I'm going to present uh, three examples. So there are simpler examples to get you started on thinking about um, counting when order is uh, irrelevant. So the first example says, a swimming store owner has been asked to create orders that contain uh, two different goggles, one set of fins, uh, two different snorkels, and three different swimsuits. The store carries Okay, so it's a seven different pairs of goggles, four sets of fins, five snorkels, and about 12 swimsuits. Okay, so how many different orders can be created? Um, and indeed, order is irrelevant here uh, because if you're gonna be uh, choosing you know, two goggles, it doesn't matter in which order um, that you would pick them. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would break this down. There's actually quite a bit of information uh, in this uh, example. So let's go back here. So we have two different, so I'm gonna highlight here, two different goggles. Okay, so one set of fins that we want in that order, uh, two different snorkels, and three different swimsuits. Okay, so if I write these, so I'm gonna write it out as given pieces of information. Okay, so goggles. Okay, so there's two different ones that we want. Um, fins. So we want one in that order. Two different snorkels. So snorkels. So we want two and then swimsuits. Okay, so I'll just put suits. So three. So that's supposed to be, you know, one particular order. Um, but the store itself, so it has, maybe I'll put this in different colors in here. It has seven different pairs of goggles. So it has seven different ones to choose from. It has four different sets of fins, five different snorkels, and then 12 different suits. Okay, and now we're supposed to be finding out in terms of the order, so how would we do that? So we will be using the combinations, uh, right? So we would have, okay, so goggles, so we're gonna be picking two goggles, all right? Now, from these two goggles, well, we can pick from seven, right? So we have seven possibilities, but we wanna only choose two of them to be able to fill that, right? So those are all the different ways that we can combine our goggles. And now, so next, so let's say, you know, now we have the fins. Now there's supposed to be only one fin in here, but we have four to choose from. So this would have been, well, there's only four, four choices. Um, and then we're picking one of them. Okay, so four choose one. So that would have been um, for that. Now, within the snorkels, so maybe for the snorkels, we have two. We want to pick two of them. All right, so the same thing, except now we have five. So this would have been five, choose two. So that's different ways of doing that. And then lastly, so we have our suits. We want to pick three suits. I guess the swimmers like their suits. All right, so here, so we have 12 choose three. So that would have been um, the way that we could select all of these. Now this is, uh, this would create um, one order if we could just, you know, stick all of these in here. But because we have all of these different choices, if you want to know how many different orders there would be, then what we would have to do is we would actually have to multiply all of these together to find all the different combinations that we would have. Because we can list these combinations, right? We can list all of these combinations. There would be, you know, a few of them. And then we can start combining it, you know, with this one, and then with this one, and then with this one. 
So instead of listing all of them, which would actually here would be quite a lot, um, instead we would just simply multiply. So the total number of orders, so the total would have been equal to all of this. And now, of course, we can find out exactly what that is, right? I mean, seven choose two. If you have a combinations button on your calculator, great. If not, then you gotta use the formula. Okay, so it would, it's n factorial divided by, you know, n minus r factorial, so that's five factorial, and then divided by the two factorial, the order that we can choose the twos, right? And then we would do the same thing here. So this would have been, this one is easy because of the fact that, you know, so this is just four, so four factorial, um, I guess divided by, you know, four minus one, and then one factorial in that way, and so on. So we can do all of these and then find out what our answer would be. I think the key thing is here, you know, is how to actually set it up. So when you are choosing between different things and you're creating these orders, you know, you would choose them, okay, uh, per one, and then you just simply multiply because we're using the multiplicative uh, principle in terms of not ordered counting, but uh, in this case, just combinations. All right, so that's example number one. Now, example number two, let's scroll down in here. It says, uh, a doctor will prescribe two painkillers and three muscle relaxants to a patient. Let's maybe highlight that. So two painkillers and three muscle relaxants to a patient. So a completely different setting. So this one's kind of like a healthcare setting. The effect that the doctor is looking for can be accomplished by five different painkillers. So five different painkillers and seven different muscle relaxants. Okay. How many combinations can the doctor choose from um, uh, prescribing? So this is kind of the same thing, except it's actually a little bit smaller to work with. So what do we have given? Um, I guess we have, so we have painkillers and then muscle relaxants. So maybe I'll put P for painkillers instead of writing the whole thing out. So we wanna, we wanna just give two of them, but we have a total uh, of five to choose from. And then the muscle relaxants, we wanna give three. Now, I don't know why there would be three or two painkillers, but I guess maybe there's some reason. So total, and then seven. So we have seven of these. So again, so if we were setting this thing up, you know, I always kinda like to write it down like this. So these would have been our painkillers. So this is our painkillers right here. And we have five, but we're choosing only two of them. So that's gonna fill up this, right? And then we have our muscle relaxants. We wanna have three of them. So that would have been our muscle relaxants, but we have seven and then we have, we are gonna choose three of them to fill up these to get all the different combinations that these have. And now what we do is again, so we're just gonna multiply this out. So five choose two multiplied by seven choose three, and then we'll, we'll get our answer. So the total is equal to, so again, so this would have been five factorial because it's uh, n factorial divided by, so this would have been three factorial and two factorial multiplied by seven factorial divided by I guess um, four factorial and three factorial. So we can find out exactly, you know, what this is. And you can manipulate this, you know, you can put it in the calculator um, or you can, I mean, I can quickly see here. So this would have been, what, this is five times four because the three factorial will cancel out and then divided by two. Um, so this is just simply that. And so and five choose two indeed is 10 multiplied by, and then this is uh, seven, four. So this is gonna be what? Seven times six uh, times five. The three factorial is three. Um, so three times two. So this right here, so three. Maybe I'll write it just so that you can see it. So notice, uh, so three factorial. So that's the same thing. So this would cancel that out. So that's gonna be 10 and this is 35. So 10 times 35, which is 350 ways 
Now, the math behind it, I think you, you would be okay with that. Um, I think it's just the setup that's kind of important to be able to see some of these combinations and then how to approach them. Notice because order is irre irrelevant, that's why we're using the combinations um, within here. So it doesn't matter if they said, you know, and how many orders could you give these medications? You know, maybe you'll give a painkiller first, maybe muscle relaxant second and so on, or, you know, vice versa, then order maybe might matter. And then depending on which painkiller you're using and so on. But here, um, they're just prescribing these. So that's uh, another example. Okay, so here's, uh, here's another one. Um, you have a bag with five dimes and five quarters. So I guess we have 10 coins in total. In how many ways can you select four coins with at least two quarters? Okay, so, um, you know, in, in order to be able to do this, I guess we can approach this from two different ways. You know, in how many in how many ways can you select it? So I guess you have a bag, and then you kind of are picking them up. Now notice that I mean, if we have five dimes, if we don't care about the dimes at all, if we're just trying to figure out how many different combinations there might be, um, then actually we can just list them, right? But that's not what the question is asking as it says, in how many ways can you select four coins? So selecting, so that means we're kind of picking out and then you would have four coins with at least two quarters. So if there were more coins, I guess we can, you know, we can use kind of the indirect method. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna show you both, all right? So how can I approach this? And then we'll see, you know, it will give us the same thing. And you can uh, you can check that out for yourself. So here, okay. So what's given? Well, what's given is you know we have five dimes, we have five quarters. So in total, you know we have ten coins. Now we're supposed to select four coins. So one, two, three, four, um, with at least two quarters. So we can use the direct approach. So we can say because there's only four coins. So I guess we could. We can say, and we're gonna to have to break this down. So at least two, so that means, okay, so two quarters. So in how many ways can I select two quarters? Then I can say, okay, if, it, if it's at least, then I would have to add it, what if I selected three quarters? And then what if I selected all, all four quarters? So that would have been direct. We would have had to add all of these. So in here, two quarters, um, so we have, so from here, so selecting two quarters. So we have five, you know, choose two quarters. And then that leaves us um, for the other. So we have five dimes. So five choose two once again. So five dimes. And then we would have to multiply these through. So this would just give us um, kind of all the combinations that we could get when there's only two quarters within, and in that case, also two dimes. So five choose two, we saw from above, that's just 10. So really this is 10 times 10, which would have been 100. All right, and you can uh, check that if you like. Now choosing three quarters, so one, two, three, and then, you know, one, I guess, dime. So this would have been five, because we have five quarters in the bag, choose three. Okay, so that's all the different ways that we can have those. And then it would have been five, just choose one because of the fact that we're just choosing um, one of those, all right? So, so that's five, choose three, five, choose one. So five, choose three is, so we have, um, uh, this is, let me just, so we have that. And sorry, so this is two factorial, three factorial. So five, four, I guess this is also 10. So five times four, I'll get rid of this and then divide it by two. So this is still 10. So 10 times, uh, this is five. So five choose one. This would have been 50. So that's that. Right, and then four quarters, well, 
I mean, if, if we're only looking for four quarters, that's five choose four. All right, and actually that's equal to five. You can double check that for yourself, All right? Because it's five factorial divided by one factorial times four factorial. So the four factorial is gonna get rid of all of those. So we'll just leave five. So this is 155 ways. So that would have been the direct way where you're going, okay, at least two quarters. So that means I have to count two plus three quarters plus four quarters. The other way that you can do this, which is the indirect method, which I do recommend um, using is always taking the total minus, right? In this case, no quarters and minus one quarter. Um, why I like this method is because if we had more coins and we had to do at least, you know, two, or let's say, you know, in this case, imagine that we had, you know, 10 quarters or something like that. This method above, we would have to go, okay, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters, six quarters. It would have been a lot of computations. While here, okay, the kind of the subtraction. So if you know what the total is, well, we know the total is 10 choose um, four, right? Because we have 10 coins in total. We're choosing four of them. So that would give us all possibilities. Unfortunately, when we do the total, that means you know some of those possibilities are gonna be with no quarters and with one quarter. But here with no quarters, so that means all of those four choices, um, that means they were all dimes. Now we have only five dimes in total, so choose four, right? So with that, so that's um, uh, five choose four, so that's just five. So we'd subtract five different ones. And um, then we would have, so this right here, so with one quarter, so that means three would have been dime, and then one would have been the quarter. So we actually did this, five choose three, so that's actually 50. So this is 50, so five and 50. Okay, and then this we can find what that is. That's the total. So that's 10 factorial divided by six factorial, four factorial um, for this. So that means this is 10 times nine times eight times seven, and the six factorial is gone, divided by, and then this is you know four times three times two. So, so that would cancel this, and then three would cancel this. So this is just 10 times seven times three, 70. So this is 210 minus five minus 50, which indeed is 155. So it gives us the same answer, but just a different way of approaching it. Okay, so that's kind of the last example within here um, that, you would, uh, that you would have, all right? So I hope that these actually do help you and show you that you know you can use these um, combinations. Unfortunate part is you do have to do a lot of these examples. You have to kind of search out, and um, you know my goal will be to actually put you through the ringer at some point because I want to do kind of the combinations with regards to cards and poker, and um, that's probably going to take me a while to create. But once that's up you know, you can search it up um, because it really then forces you to understand, you know, how do I think about creating these combinations? All right. But for now, these examples should do um, and hopefully they will help you and you are able to understand and follow them. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.